In the lower Jordan River Valley, eight miles north of the Dead Sea, a distinct ridge rises from the landscape. But this is no ordinary ridge, because buried under layers of dirt and rock are the ruins of an ancient city that dates back almost 4,000 years. Modern archaeologists have named the site Tal el Hammam. When you look at Tal el Hammam from satellite imagery, it's long and it's narrow. It's about a mile from end to end. We believe that as many as 50,000 people occupied the city. According to experts, Tal el Hammam is shrouded in mystery. We don't know what it was named in ancient times or who lived there, but in recent years, some archaeologists have theorized that Tal el Hamal is actually the ruins of the biblical city of Sodom. In Genesis, you have these cities, Sodom and Gomorrah, and there's wickedness, there's inequity in the city. But then God decides, no, this city is doing horrible kinds of things. So I'm literally going to rain fire, sulfur down. I'm going to destroy this city. God said, enough is enough. Fire and burning stone came forth out of the heavens from Yahweh and consumed the city. In fact, the Bible says that every person, crop, plant, tree, twig, anything that was living was destroyed. The Sodom and Gomorrah story is fascinating in, in that it's meant to be a, a metaphor, an understanding of, oh, when human beings don't do what they should do, here's what God does to destroy us. It's God's power being manifested. It's an act of God. The destruction of Sodom and Gomorrah has long been associated with the wrath of God. Until recently, many scholars thought that the story was only a myth. So why do some experts now believe that Tal el Hammam could be the remains of the city of Sodom? There is more geographical data in the biblical text for the location of Sodom than there is for any other biblical site. The Bible was very, very clear that it was north and east of the Dead Sea, and it was very clear that it was east of Jerusalem, and Tal Hammam matches the geographics of the text, it matches the time frame of the text, it matches all the possible descriptions of the text describes it. The idea that Tal el Hammam matches the location of Sodom in the Bible is intriguing. And researchers also claim that there is physical evidence on site that confirms the biblical description of Sodom's destruction. The actual destruction event is recorded in just two verses in Genesis chapter 19, verses 24 and 25 where it talks about the fact that rock and fire came down from the heavens and destroyed Sodom and Gomorrah. One theory is that an incoming meteor or meteor fragment exploded over the north end of the Dead Sea and destroyed Tal el Hammam. There are numerous proxies that give strong indication that an airburst or impact event have occurred. The first is the evidence of thermal damage that's represented through melted building materials and partially melted pottery fragments. The second is the appearance and occurrence of microspherals, very, very tiny spherical shaped melted pieces of mineral grains and sands. And the third is a high concentration of rare earth elements. Rare earth elements are very common in asteroids, not so common on the earth. What's interesting is that the middle layer of Tal Hammam has a really high salt concentration. It's so salty that a lot of times we excavate pottery that's just coated with thick salt crystals. That's pretty unusual. Why is that layer so salty? Well, it's the same salt as found in the Dead Sea. Probably because this airburst event pushed a massive amount of dirt, water, and salt over the landscape. A meteor explosion in the sky? If Tal el Hammam really was Sodom, 
Could such an explosion be the reason why the city is now buried in dirt that has a high concentration of salt? Some experts believe the answer is yes, and they point to the biblical story for further evidence of the connection between the destruction of Sodom and salt. The story of Sodom essentially picks up in Genesis 19, where you have these two angels that look like men who travel down to visit Lot, who's living down in Sodom, and Lot shows them tremendous hospitality. You're supposed to be kind to immigrants. You're supposed to be kind to foreigners, as Lot has done. God has decided to destroy the city because of its wickedness. So the angels grab Lot and his family, and as they're leaving Sodom, the angels give them the command, don't even look back. And then you have this fascinating detail where it says that Lot's wife turned and looked back, and she turned into a pillar of salt. What could be the significance of Lot's wife turning into a pillar of salt? Does this detail from the story support the theory that a meteor explosion in the sky buried Sodom in dirt and salt? Perhaps. But is a meteor explosion a natural event, or is it an act of God? There's been a lot of question about fire and brimstone coming down from the heavens, right? This is one of these unexplained mysteries. And there have been a lot of theories and this probably has something to do with wanting evidence that proves faith. A lot of people believe in these stories, and archaeology can confirm them. I think from a point of view of science, as we look at the biblical text and we look at the statement of this was fire and burning stone from God out of the heavens. If such an event actually occurred, would it have left some evidences around? Well, of course, yes. That's all confirmed by the science. Now, science can't tell me one way or the other whether it's an act of God, but the event is confirmed.